A while back, a few years ago, I did a video about before you adopt a Doberman Pinscher. Now, this is a few years on, and my boy here is five years old now. So I want to do a follow-up to that video because we've learned a lot. So, <laughs> in the first video, things I didn't mention that I should have, is that uh, we didn't expect to get a Doberman Pinscher. It wasn't something that we set out to do or that we intended to do. A friend showed up and uh, he could no longer care for him because his wife believed <laughs> he was going to be a smaller dog. And once he got big enough, he had to do something with the dog. So now this is a follow-up to that video and I know, <laughs> with a little bit more knowledge and, and things uh, that I can pass on to you. So if you're going to get a Doberman Pinscher, the first thing is how old is he? If he's a year old or older, then <sighs> you want to spend some time with this dog before uh, you decide to adopt it and see if you can handle if there's any behavior problems because at that age uh, it's likely that they've developed some some habits and some things that you may not be uh, happy with especially if the guy's wanting to get rid of his or the guy or the woman is wanting to get rid of their Doberman so he may have developed some kind of traits like biting excessive barking or not not wanting to use the bathroom outside it could be any kind of any kind of traits they could have developed that would make an, an unsatisfactory experience with the dog and maybe something you can or cannot handle so you want to spend some time with the dog if the dog is over a year old if you're getting a puppy uh, and that would be the best experience I would suggest then watch lots of videos on YouTube learn how to raise this puppy you expect this puppy to want to to bite and nibble around on you and one of the things I did at first was absolutely did not let him put his mouth on me I thought that maybe that would be the best way to go but I learned later that it wasn't I learned later the best way to go was he has to learn his bite pressure when they're really young like that they need to learn their bite pressure Easy, 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 be real easy, easy, good boy. So when they put their mouth on you or bite around, when it's a little too hard, when it starts to hurt a little bit, that a really loud yelp, like, you ready Chris? Yep! Like that. <laughs> and it lets him know that was too hard then immediately stop all play and once you do that you stop all the play the fun stops there's no treats there's no fun and you just go away from the dog and leave him alone he learns from that that hey that was too hard I shouldn't have done that now if you get him from a puppy that's the time to train him they are products of how you train them and how you teach them if you start training him early on to be very territorial and aggressive that's the kind of dog you're going to get if you teach him that that's a good thing you show praise and reward for you think it's funny that your pup your puppy is barking at neighbors or barking at somebody visits your house if you show him praise for that that's the kind of dog you're going to get don't do that so if you're wanting a very sociable dog and you're not intending this guy to just be somebody who's going to guard your house or uh, guard some fenced in lot <laughs> And you better have some really good insurance that covers Doberman. I do a video about, about insurance and Dobermans because a lot of home insurance doesn't cover your Doberman. But unless you want that, then you want to train him to be sociable. You want to be train him to be friendly and that people coming over and that things like that are a good thing and that this is a happy time. Uh, give him treats to give him uh, from the time he's small and growing up. Let him be social and be part of the experience because he loves that. Now he can love that, but he can also be the kind of dog that thinks that you want him to protect your home from invaders and strangers. And part of the breeding is that. So if you teach him to do that, that's what he'll do. And in modern times, that's not usually a good thing. That's not usually what we want. We want to teach him to be friendly and loving because the last thing you want it's a dog that you can't take anywhere you can't do anything with because you've taught him to be mean that's not a that's not a good thing to teach him and it would be counterproductive for him because he wouldn't get to go as many places and he really really loves to go places in the car uh, he loves to go on hikes in the mountains and where we live he gets a lot of that so teach him to be nice teach him to be friendly teach him to be accepting also learn that a Doberman 
<laughs> a Doberman is a Velcro dog. He wants to be with you all the time. He wants to be around you. If you're in your home, he wants to sit on the couch with you. He wants to sit on top of you. He wants to be around you all the time. Being outside is not going to be a good thing with a Doberman uh, because he wants to be part of the family. He wants to be around you. Now, I got a bunch of guff on the first video saying that no dog wants to live outside, and that's true. No dog wants to live outside. Most dogs don't want to live outside. Uh, but a lot of them can tolerate it a lot better. They have more fur, they have more temperament for it. And you got Alaskan Malamutes, you got uh, dogs that with double layers of coats that are that are intended uh, for cold weather. You got dogs that are used to cold weather that, that don't want to come inside. It's too warm for them in the winter time uh, to be in your house. Doberman is not one of those dogs. He will never be content uh, or accept living in a kennel outside. If you're not intending on having this 75 to 100 pound dog living with you in your house, uh, trying to sleep in your beds and getting on your couch and being on you all the time, then a Doberman may not be for you. Let's face it, he can be intimidating. He has an intimidating look and he scares some people just from looking at him. So there are going to be people who don't accept him, neighbors and people in your neighborhood that may give you a little bit of problem, but it'll work out. Now, tricks. We've heard criticism over having your dog do tricks. Tricks are an important part for your dog. Tricks allow your dog to interact with you. Uh, tricks allow your dog to understand obedience, understand his place in how this works. Uh, he needs to know that he is not the alpha. You are the alpha. You are the pack leader. Wait. Wait. Okay. He isn't. And it's an important thing for a dog. They want a pack leader, they want to be led. And if you're not Bye. that powerful, assertive pack leader, he did. then he'll he turn did. into that powerful, assertive pack leader. And that's the last thing you want. So love and love and caring, oh, yeah, taking good. care of him. But at the same time, discipline is a really difficult balance. It's a difficult thing to manage because he is a powerful assertive dog so you want to show you love him and he is such a velcro friendly guy that it's it's difficult to manage your love for him that you just want to give him whatever he wants and, and be good to him and you're so su surprised at how smart he is and how many things he can do that you just want to give in and he ends up leading the, the pack and you can't do that for his safety uh, for the public safety, for everybody involved and for your happiness, you need to be the pack leader. You understand things he doesn't. You understand the road is dangerous. You understand places he can't go. You understand things he can't eat. He can't eat chocolate. He, you know, you understand the things that can't happen. So when things come around that need to be done for his safety and just the well-being of everyone, he needs to listen quickly and know who is the pack leader. Now, I'm going to admit I have been guilty a few times of giving him his way because he does cute things. <laughs> you know, he, he will tell me when he wants something, you know, and he'll lead me to it. If I say, what is it? He'll take me to what the thing that he wanted and bark and put his paw on it and just does things that just, don't you? Just really, really super intelligent. And it's hard not to give him his way sometimes. But you need to make sure you always assert yourself as pack leader. This video is not exclusive on everything you need to know to have a Doberman, but it touches on the basic things that you need to know. And on my channel, I've uploaded literally, I don't know, a hundred videos about the different things that you probably need to know before you adopt a Doberman Pinscher. Now, just because you saw Magnum P.I. or you saw some kind of cool TV show where it shows a Doberman doing some great tricks doesn't mean yours is going to come that way out of the box because he's not. Uh, he needs to be trained. He needs to be taught. And... It's a lifelong commitment, his life. About 10 to 16 years. Uh, 16 if you're really lucky. So they have a shorter life. They have things that you need to know. Now, Doberman can be a very rewarding experience. It can be a great, great, fun family friend for everybody. Um, as long as you understand what you're getting into first and you're willing to put in the commitment and all the things that go with him, plenty of exercise, probably, I'm going to say number one, and we give him a job. Just watch our videos. Listen, thanks for watching this video. And I hope this helps uh, if you go to get your own Doberman. And with this Magnum PI thing coming up, uh, what's happened in the past is people get these dogs. And they don't keep them because they expect them to be that dog in the show and be that well behaved immediately. And they're not. So 
it's likely there's going to be a lot of them in the pound and in shelters needing homes so these are some things that you need to know when you're looking for your new friend listen thanks for watching